Barnstormers flight crew. How are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> I guess I should probably look the part here if I'm going to do this whole thing. This is the first ever live pregame that the fan show has done for the flight crew. Thank you all for being here. And with any special occasion requires a very special guest, uh, guest the voice of the Iowa Barnstormers, Joe Stacy, is here with me tonight. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here with all these, uh, well, the flight crew and, and these guys have been dedicated, guys and gals have been dedicated for years, and uh, now they're going to be rewarded with uh, a ball game tonight that, that the organization uh, and the fans have been waiting for for a very long time. And, and it's kind of a curveball. I know that you guys are so used to me talking and conducting the interview, and I, I just had this guy on the other night. Some of you heard it. It was a great time, great story. But we're going to flip the script, as I call it, and Joe is going to ask me some questions. You can ask me anything that you want. There is no holds barred here, Joe. Well, first of all, when you know, I, it's a pleasure to be on the fan show. And when you ask me to be on the fan show and, and, and I get to be at home, um, there are some adult beverages involved. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, there's a and, Never. And I get to spread my stuff all over my kitchen table, and that way I can answer any question. And I remember being on last week and saying, hey, you know what, I, I don't have a whole lot to say because the season has been so short. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've only had one game, and uh, it ended up being a really nice interview, and I listened to it. And, and uh, so I, I thank you. Thank you for having me on. And the Barstomers fans and the IFL and, and the Barstomer organization um, – should give you major props for spending your own dime to come up here at Buzzard Billy's uh, to be to the here for the IFL game of the week against the uh, Arizona Rattlers and the Iowa Barnstormers um, and, and the professional setup that you have and just uh, how professional you are in uh, helping out the sport of indoor football. Everybody loves what you do, and uh, uh, I certainly thank you for doing uh, for you doing what you do. Well, and I appreciate that. Connor Ferguson did a lovely article yeah. uh, on, on me yesterday, which, you know, is uh, not something that a lot of people are lining up to do. Uh, but he described it best, the college game day of indoor football, which, you know, that's a, an aspect to it. I still like to do my show the three nights a week, but I, I love to travel and I love to meet the fans. The flight crew is one of the best out there. Connor Ferguson is a very talented young man. He's an Iowa State South, sophomore, <laughs> uh, if I'm not uh, mistaken. He's, he's part of our football Friday night crew and uh, um, very impressed by all of his efforts as well. Yeah, it's been a, a great time getting to know him. All of the flight crew, I'm always welcome with open arms here in Iowa. It's like a second home for me at this point. But, you know, we're here to talk football and, and anything else that we want to in this 30-minute segment that we've got here while we enjoy our, our pregame festivities. So what what would you like to know about me, well, Joe? Well, you know what, uh, Richard? You know, first of all, thanks for coming to Des Moines. This is a very big ball game, uh, the IFL game of the week. Yep. Uh, the Arizona Rattlers, the 2017 Indoor Football League champions, 1-0 against the the one and zero Iowa Barnstormers. The Barnstormers last year, thirteen and three, made it all the way to the semifinals. Uh, uh, what do you know about Arizona? <laughs> what I know about Arizona is that they are as dangerous as people would probably perceive them to be. The reigning champions, of course, and you know there was some turnover, like with any team. But they they have a backup quarterback who is serviceable. They have a solid run game, but that defense is so nasty. That is a a really nasty stout defense. And the best part of today's game is going to be when the Iowa offense goes out there against the, the Arizona defense. That's where the game is going to be won and lost right there. And I, th this is not your first time in Des Moines? It is not. This is my second time in the right. lovely city of Des Moines, yeah. Iowa. You bet. You bet. And uh, you came all the way from? Spokane, Washington. Spokane, Washington, on your own dime. J Jimmy Pratt uh, is your personal chauffeur? He is, yes. Uh, he didn't uh, bother to wear the... Uh, the tuxedo last night when he picked me up, but nevertheless, you know, his services are still uh, top-notch when it comes to being, being a host for me on, on the road here. But uh, thank you, Jimmy, and thanks to everybody else that's been so helpful for uh, the tour and, and everything. Yes, get him more beer, please. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> talk about the flight crew. Uh, how wacky are these people? The, the flight crew, man. <laughs> What, what can be said that hasn't already been said about this group of fans? They, they get dressed up like nobody's business, and they're loud, they're proud, and they love their football. And I think that's one of the best things about this league is, is its uh, dedicated fan base in Iowa is, is really second to none. Green Bay is a great football town, but they're, 
you know, their fans will go, they will sit, they will watch the game, they will get loud, they will cheer, win, lose, or draw. But Iowa, the fans, the dedicated ones, like the flight crew, take it to the next level. They really do. And I know the Green Bay fans travel because these people have a great relationship yeah. with the Green Bay tailgaters. Yeah, that's very true. Green Bay is, is one of the best out there as far as they will travel. These guys travel well. I know that Jimmy and, and a bunch of his group will go to Nebraska and Cedar Rapids and then, of course, Green Bay and even South Dakota. That's how I met half of these guys was at right. one of the United Bulls a couple of years back when I started seeing Iowa Barnstormer and Green Bay Blizzard T-shirts all around. I was like, your team's not in this game. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> how did you get your start in, in, in sports broadcasting and uh, uh, why do you follow uh, the IFL? So it was uh, on a rooftop of a bar in downtown Spokane at my 10-year uh, high school reunion. And a good friend of mine, Cameron Severins, after we talked sports for probably a good 30 minutes, he said, you know, how are you not a sports analyst? And that was almost insulting to me because I know analysts can kind of be one of those things that not a lot of people are big fans of. They're, they're the experts. They're the overpaid experts, and the, half the time they get stuff wrong. So... I said, I, I don't know, I've never really considered myself one of those experts. He's like, why don't you try a podcast? And I said, why don't I try a podcast? So I, I recorded it in the, the corner of a spare room in my home, like I was telling Connor when, when we did the interview. And from there, it just kind of snowballed. Uh, Spokane had a team. And so I said, you know, hey, if I'm going to do this sports thing and do it right, why don't I follow a team all season? So I followed them, their inaugural season as the rebranded Empire in the IFL. And they did very well. They did very, very well. I went to that championship that game, at, or that season. And um, uh, basically, from that point on, I had met so many people like Jimmy, uh, Ron, and and Mitch all over the uh, the league that, you know, they were like, why don't you come out and check out one of our games? See, exactly. see what we do for a tailgate. And I was like, okay. And so then it just, it really snowballed from there in ways that I'd never even imagined that it would. And I'm very happy about that. It's a family. The, the, these people are family. And there's, uh, you know, a, a, less than a third of them here right now. I know uh, there's many more that are coming in. But, uh, uh, you know, Ron Latson, I, I don't see him here right now. But uh, they get together and uh, they, they really enjoy the game. They cheer loud and there's a lot of cowbell here at Wells Fargo <laughs> Arena. Right? I don't know if anybody has any cowbell uh, in the room right now. Oh, there it there is. There it is. The cowbell. So when you travel, um, how do you decide uh, w which game is the game of the week and, and uh, uh, how do you decide where you're going to travel to? So Connor said it best that it's kind of like the, the college game day of the Indoor Football League, which is ultimately what I would like it to become, where I do my show the three nights a week, and then people can, can request me or demand me to, to come and do something special for their games, right? Uh, there's no limit as far as, you know, what, what event, because I've done all different kinds. It could even be a music event, a music festival, and I'll, I'll come and do a special, you know, pre-festival show with them. But I love the idea of people inviting me out to experience what it is that they have to offer, and I know that that's a lot of what College Game Day does, but I didn't want to limit myself to, to just going to the big game. So I choose a lot of rivalry games, you bet. And, and I think that that's important because I have to plan these really far in advance, and so I can't go into the season and go, oh, this game is going to be the game of the week next week and book my flight and fly out. That is the goal. I would love to be able to do that. But since it's on my dime, I have to look at the schedule the day it comes out and be like, that one, that one, that one's on the same weekend and it's only a two-hour drive, so let's do that one too. And then, okay, we've got that one a little later and that'll be a good matchup. And, and yeah, I just, you know, and there's some adjustments that happen during the season. You know, I might change some plans. I changed one of the games last year. I was supposed to go to Colorado, but then Spokane was going to go into Sioux Falls, and they were both pretty hot at the time. And I said, you know, that'll probably be the better of the two games to go to and watch. And I felt bad disappointing, you know, anybody in Colorado that was expecting me to come there. But uh, I think this year is a lot different from last year in, in regards to people actually do want me to come to their their city and, and be like, if I didn't, you know, they would probably be a little upset about that. So I'm here for Iowa and the Barnstormers and the flight crew, and you guys have been so great to have me. Well, the, the Barnstormers fans deserve you to be in town, and uh, I, I hope the IFL and, and, and the, all of the owners and uh, uh, the organizations out there um, realize and recognize your efforts for what you do to uh, increase the knowledge and spread the word of uh, what a terrific game this is. And, and it really is a feeder system to the CFL and the NFL. Yep. Uh, now the, the IFL is, you know, uh, whether it's six teams, eight teams, ten teams, or 12 teams, uh, you have some quality football, and uh, there's going to be a lot of nasty, 
um, rowdy, ruckus, high-scoring uh, affairs in the IFL this year, and we're looking forward to uh, one of those today here uh, in Des Moines, Wells Fargo Arena, uh, the uh, 1-0 Arizona Rattlers against the uh, 1-0 Iowa Barnstormers. I know, again, the Iowa Barnstormer fan base, uh, the organization, uh, the, the play-by-play broadcaster, everybody involved has been uh, working for this game uh, for a very long time. The last time we made the playoffs was 2009, and then last year Dixie Wooten era came to town, 13-3, and 11-game win streak, and That's made it fantastic. all the way to the semifinals. And so uh, we appreciate uh, all of the fans. I know the front I speak for the front office. And uh, I speak for, from, from my heart, Joe Stacy, uh, Richard, uh, a team. And you, the, the job that you do is unparalleled. Thank you so very much. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, the setup out here at Buzzer Billy's is terrific. Congratulations on everything you do, and thanks for having me on. I'm very humbled to be a small part of it. The, the last question I have for you before, before I cut you loose is I know it's wins and losses, but it's really all about this. Am I right? The belt, the player of the game, okay? Uh, that, that's what matters the most. It's not big enough for my waist. It, it's not, and, and I know that it can go to whoever I want because it's my damn belt after all. But, um, <laughs> there, there could be the, the commentator of the game but, yeah, or, 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 yeah, the coach, or the coach of the game, but who is your pick for player of the game tonight? Who do you got? My pick for player of the game would probably go with uh, Zachary Allen. Uh, with the Iowa Barnstormers, just because I know the uh, Arizona Rattlers are going to have to rely on their run game uh, a little bit tonight uh, uh, as Verlin Reed, their quarterback, has gone down. And uh, they have uh, Jeff Ziamba, uh, I believe, is their quarterback. He doesn't know the game, uh, hasn't had the experience. And so I, I believe that the Arizona Rattlers are going to run the football a lot and um, it's going to be up to the Iowa Barnstormer defensive line and linebacker core to stop the run, not only in between the two tackles or the two guards, if you will, uh, but uh, uh, on the outside. So Zachary Allen is, is my pick for player of the game defensively uh, for the Iowa Barnstormers. All right, well, Joe, a pleasure as always. As well. We finally met face-to-face, ladies That's and right. gentlemen. That's it. I and love your is, program. He is as hyped up as, as they say. So thank you, Joe love Stacey. You. Thank you. Go and call a good one. Watch your I step. Will. Watch the I chords will. there. Yep. Thanks, man. Ne- next up is going to be Connor Ferguson. He's going to come up and say a few words about the game this evening. And uh, Connor, of course, you know him, you love him. He, he's an up-and-comer here. Oh. Connor, how you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. It's uh, great to be out and going to a Barnstormers game again. Yeah, it's, uh, it is game day. It is Saturday. Joe Stacy's doing high fives on the way out. <laughs> did, did Joe get enough selfies? I think he did. <laughs> uh, so how, how do you like this game? Like, what do you think? Is, it, is this... You know, I mean, it's not as many teams in the league as last year, but still, if, if you were to look at everything considered, even the teams that were in the league last year, this has still got to stand out to you as one of the, the better games of the week. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, I'm really excited to see how Iowa can do against uh, a top team like Arizona. You know, it's six. It's a six-team league. There's, I, I'm putting it into kind of three tiers, the Arizona and Sioux Falls on the top, Iowa and Nebraska in the middle, and the other two below. But we'll see how Iowa can do tonight in uh, – you know, six teams or eight, Joe said it best, it's still really quality football. Oh, yeah. It's it's a great product out there on the field. I, I do love when, when I get to come and watch it firsthand because, uh, you know, you can watch it from home, but it, it, the reality is is that you only get so much experience that way. So being here with the flight crew and everything is always a, a fun time. What, what's what been your, your favorite thing about the IFL since you started following it? Oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> that's what I try to I, ask here. <laughs> yeah, so I, I fell in love with arena football when it was on TV on, like, ESPN in, like, 2005. Like, I had no clue Iowa had a team before. And, like, three years later, I was on Wikipedia or something, I found it. I was like, wow, that's sweet. <laughs> good and, old Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, so they came They came back. We uh, My parents got season tickets uh, the second year they were back until still just recently they left them. But uh, it's just the – the whole aspect of the fans being so close to the field and it's just a tight knit yep. group it's a family it's not you know there's no player here that has too big of an ego to be interviewed i feel like we should specify it these fans and and their fan clubs are a family but it may not always be the most family friendly environment because it can get a little nasty out there but uh, they they have they do it with the best intent they they really do <laughs> 
And so when it comes to uh, the Iowa Barnstormers and, and your coverage for them season to season, what, what's been the most impressive thing for you other than obviously last year, the, the season that they had, the win streak that they went on? Has the bar been set reasonably for this year's team? Uh, the bar is set with that last Sioux Falls game this, or this uh, past season, the regular season home uh, finale. Yep. They lost, but it was probably the loudest I've ever heard in the Wells Fargo Arena. Such a besides, close game. Besides really the good. state wrestling tournament. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's you got when you got such a big game like that and they marketed it, they did really well. That was the pinnacle of they did everything right for that last game of the year. Yeah, and they had a couple of really big wins last year going into Wichita Falls and pulling that one off. That was crazy. Um, who's your favorite player out there on the on the Iowa team this oh, year? Oh, man, I don't know if I can give that away. Yeah, you uh, can. You can. It's okay. I won't tell. Uh, I guess, you know, they're all real great guys. B.J. Butler is a uh, – He's a character. Keith Jones, the whole defensive line is just hilarious. Grant Rojas, Brady Rowland. I pro- I'm going to forget, like, all of them. But, <laughs> you know, uh, they're all great players, and that goes back to not being too big too big ego to get interviewed in this league. They're great guys. Now, have you been to a Titans game in Cedar Rapids two hours away? I have not yet gone to a Titans game. We've Fair gone enough. to uh, Sioux Falls, and then uh, I visited uh, Sioux City with Taylor Jenison. Oh, that, that's so. good. What what's the one place you haven't been to that you want to go to for a game? Definitely Arizona. Uh, yep. the press row uh, in, in the stands behind the field goal post. I just want to sit up there. Yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's it. Like it's it, yeah, that's such a unique uh, place to put that and. Great team, great organization down there. I, I will say this: you will jump at least the first two times you hear the cannon go off for the touchdown because I did, and it is so loud and deafening when they set that cannon off in Arizona. But there's no cannon tonight, just cowbell for these uh, Iowa Barnstormers. So very excited to see what the fans can cook up. Now, looking at the rest of the season, uh, this is obviously a tough matchup for Iowa, and then there, there's going to be a, a few more matchups down the stretch. What, what's the one team that you are most afraid of for Iowa this season? Uh, probably Sioux Falls. Uh, yeah, everybody uh, says Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. <laughs> I, you know, we're playing Arizona tonight. I don't want to give you a different answer. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're both really good, but uh, I would put Sioux Falls up there just because they don't know how to beat them. Yeah. We haven't seen it yet. So. Well, and, and you look around the league, and because this season there's only six teams, we can kind of have uh, maybe a couple of dream matchups as far as United Bowl. And, and I mentioned to, to Joe Stacy on the show on Thursday, I was like, how crazy would it be if there was Sioux Falls against Iowa? Normally that would have to be like a playoff or even a championship. Yeah, yeah. But to get to the United Bowl game, but we might actually get that as a United Bowl this year. And I think this is uh, – tonight is a big – big step in that playoff scene yep. that yep. if you want to host the United Bowl, this is the game to win tonight. Yeah, the, every win counts this season, but the, these ones at home, you need to win in order to have that one up uh, in case anything comes down the stretch uh, in regards to tiebreakers, because we, we did see that play out a, a little bit last year, especially in that conference where there was Iowa, Wichita Falls. And Sioux Falls. 12 and 14 missing the playoffs. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. It was Man. it was ugly. We won't have that this year, though. Uh, it may be, you know, a, a couple less teams in the league, but we're not going to have anyone that uh, should be and not be in. And I think that's important yeah, yeah. to know. Whoever makes it to the championship is going to have to earn their way into it. No, no doubt about it. But uh, what's the most exciting thing, then, that you're looking forward to this season? It doesn't even have to be Barnstormers, but just, like, overall. as far We have the new replay system. we got a few new head coaches. There's some new players, uh, some players that got moved around that did great last year. Like, if you had to put your money on something, being the standout for 2018, where would you put it? You ask a lot of great questions. <laughs> I just want to say that. <laughs> Um, you know, I want to see uh, I want to see how Sioux Falls bounces back from losing in the United Bowl because that was a heartbreaking loss for them. And uh, starting zero and one. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to uh, I want to see if they can put on a United Bowl and have confetti ready for the team that wins. <laughs> that was, we went we went to the United Bowl last year in we Arizona did, we one, did. and it was like it was like everyone lost, everyone left, and turned off the lights in the arena. And just you yeah, know, you can stay here and celebrate all you want. We're gonna we're gonna head out. See that that's the thing about neutral sites, which I think should should be a must in like any football atmosphere because it's a one and done game. It's not a series. Well, you know? it's hard to do with a smaller league. It is. Like it this. is. I'm just I just think you know if they win, you know have. Let them bring their own confetti stuff. Let them, you know, <laughs> let, make sure they know they can celebrate if you don't want to do it for them. 
And then be, on, be a good host like that. Uh, on a side note, we, we've got one of our favorites here who's celebrating his birthday. Joe is is actually celebrating a birthday, and uh, he uh, did. Is the cake here for Joe? Does Joe have his his cake does. ready? I think. I think, he think does. Okay. Hey Joe, happy birthday! We we wanted to, to wish you a, a happy birthday here from the fan show. He he, look, he doesn't look a day over thirty five, does he? I don't I don't think he does. <laughs> I said, you don't look a day over 35. <laughs> High fives all around. Oh, where did Jimmy go? Where did the Baconator go? Oh, the, the cake is available for those looking looking for something to munch on. All right, well, Connor, what, what's the, the next uh, big thing that you've got as far as uh, your, your journalism goes? Because you do for uh, Last Word on Sports, yes. which thank you for that article. Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I, no, no ego stroking here. Uh, it was I really say, no, Richard great. does a fantastic job. This is a great, great setup. It, it's just like college game day minus like 5,000 during college games. <laughs> which kind of makes it a bit more bearable, doesn't a little, it? A little bit. A little bit more bearable. When you're, when you're one of the drunk college kids, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I you know I know that there should be probably like more more gimmicky stuff or, or whatever to it and I'm sure that that maybe will come with time but I've always had kind of my own way of, of doing things and and to be compared to be in such good company as as something like College Game Day is definitely something I, I will not sweep under the rug but I know that that's that's not you know uh, the the final product of, of what the fan show is setting out to be but it is uh, uh, in good company so I, I thank you for that comparison I really do so enjoy the game tonight. I appreciate you uh, making a stop here on this pregame show. We've got uh, beer, wings, and, and birthday cake, so go enjoy some of that, Connor. Absolutely. Appreciate for it me. as always. I'll see you up there in, in the press box. And that was Connor Ferguson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the cake is out. The cake's ready. Where did the baconator go? Where is Jimmy Pratt? Is he is he using the restroom? All right, Joe. Joe, you can come step up here. It's your birthday. We can wrap up this last eight minutes here. Oh, there's Jimmy. <laughs> Whoa. Easy there. All right, so he's he's got his birthday cake. It is Joe. It is his birthday. Happy birthday, Joe. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And on behalf of Barn Stroman fans, we want to thank you. Thank you. For coming out, be a part of, being a part of this. So uh, what's the, the one thing that you're looking the most forward to today's matchup? Offense, defense, player, what? What I'm looking forward at tonight, Richard, is I want to see how well these guys respond to last week's game. Yeah, yeah. Because last week's game was really more or less a domination. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's be on. Let's be on the call like it was. It was a complete, complete domination. What I want to see tonight is how they react from the game. You know, and you know, talking with the Barnstorm official um, during the course of that game, you know, he may mention to me that in the course of a game like this, it is the defense that's more ahead. Than the offense. Yeah. You know, and I found that to be surprising considering the fact that this offense racked up 41 points on the <laughs> night behind, behind a new quarterback. Yeah. Okay. What do you but, think of Drew Powell, the new quarterback for Barnstorm? I, I, you know, th- this is the first game I've seen Drew Powell, Powell play, and I, was, I came away extremely impressed. Yeah, I, I but, not, but, but But here's the thing not because of him. But because of the talent that surrounds him. Ryan Ballantyne, Brady you, Rowland. If, yeah. Well, not just that, but the play of the offensive line, the way they protected him. Yeah. Okay. Protection's key in this. I, I mean, in I mean, football, whether it be indoor, NFL, college protection, it's always important. We all know that. And, and I love the way how this offensive line, a group of guys that really had to play together all that long, stepped up. Protected Drew Powell, was able to complete the passes that he needed to complete. I did not see Drew Powell commit any um, stupid plays. Yeah, no. If you want to call that. Pretty much know. mistake free, yeah. 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 I mean, well, we don't want to say mistake free. No, there, no, no. There, there, there were probably <laughs> there, some. Yeah, there were some, some, uh, some errors there. Some questionable, uh, some questionable uh, you know, throws and what have you. But, but. I was very impressed with the way that man played. And I think that for the Iowa Barnstormers, they have a quarterback that they can build on as each week goes along. So is it safe to say all you want for your birthday is an Iowa win tonight? Oh, they're, 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 hey, the, the best thing that I want is an Iowa I already got my best birthday with a birthday cake, you know. So the second <laughs> best thing I would love to have is a, um, 
uh, a win tonight over Arizona. Go 2 0 on the season, get first place in their conference, and uh, get out on the road. And especially when you defeat the defending indoor football league champions, that says a lot about your program, and it says a lot about Dixie Wooten and what he's brought to this organization. Yes, Dixie Wooten, the reigning coach of the year 2017 for the IFL, and he, he has his work cut out for him against a guy like Kevin Guy. He went 12-3 and three last year, barely, barely missed the playoffs in 2017. And it's like this team did not miss a beat. And what I liked about Dixie and what he did is that he kept the core of that offensive, of the core of the coaching staff together. Because yeah. Dixie, I think Dixie knows that he had something special with these group of, of coaches. Yeah, he really seeing, does. And, and, and we've seen, you know, and... I, I'm going to be very interested. I'll be very interested, like I said earlier, how well they respond tonight. How well do they respond to winning such a big game over the Green Bay Blizzard and winning it in the fashion yeah, that they won it? It was a yeah, fantastic finish. Let's be honest. And I would point to on football, it is very rare to see a 20 point win. It is, yeah. They, okay. they play so them, them close. So for them to do that, you ask yourself. Is this a team that's very special? Can they build on that? Or did Green Bay just have a bad game and, and I was a, you know, an average team? Well, Green Bay will take on the danger tomorrow night, and that's another good matchup for this week. Yeah, it, 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 it is going to be a good, a good matchup. And I'm sure that Dixie Wood and the, and the Bornstormers will be watching that game Yep, as very well. closely. You know, I will be very interested, like I said, how they respond to tonight's challenge. I'll be very interested in seeing if we can come out this game injury free again. Yeah, you know that's you know and and indoor football league staying injury free, injury free is a plus. My my, about it. my dad used to say that he believed the team that stayed the healthiest throughout the season was probably going to win the championship, which sounds a lot like a Madden quote. The, the team that wins the most games usually ends up winning winning the championship. You know, if you win your last game, you win the championship, but. It's very true. It's a game of attrition, and you want to stay healthy. You want to have your best out there on the field at all times. So well, that's important. And, it's all, and it also relates to a camaraderie. It, it relates to you know your familiar, familiarity with each other. Yeah. The more you play with each other, the more you play with each other, the better you get to know them, and you know what their tendencies, what they are willing, what they're willing to do. So. The more that this offense stays healthy, the more that this offense stays healthy, I think the better they're going to be as each game rolls around. They're going to have their setbacks. They're going to make no mistake about it, but they're going to have their setbacks during the course of the year. But how they respond to that during the course of the year will be very interesting to see. I think Dixie Wooden learned a valuable lesson last year, and I think he's going to apply that to this year if they if they lose like a heartbreaker game. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, kickoff is just a couple of hours away, so eat up, drink up, get your birthday cake. And uh, Flight Crew, I want to thank you so much one more time for having me. That's going to do it for my uh, pregame show here. Again, happy birthday to Joe. I hope to hear the cowbell loud tonight, but you guys have been uh, fantastic. So eat up, drink up, and, and we'll see you out there. So thanks again, you guys, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, and you do an awesome job, and we thank you for all you do with the IFL. I appreciate that, Joe. You take you. care of yourself. Happy uh, birthday. Thanks thank for having me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his players' butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.